We get to hear the story of John the Baptizer twice during Advent. We'll hear it again next Sunday. So I'm going to talk instead this morning on the uh, text from Isaiah, one of my favorites for Advent. Advent. This is a time when our readings speak both of death and birth. They go hand in hand. And this isn't the tone that we like to set for Advent. I mean, we're leading up to Christmas with all its carols of joy and good cheer. So we, not, we should not have anything gloomy. No, none of these gloomy clouds should be hovering over the horizon, right? Yet if you listen to many of the lessons that are read during these four Sundays of Advent, you will hear warnings and promises woven together. The words of Isaiah, just read a moment ago, illustrate this distinctive Advent mix of good news and bad news. The bad news from Isaiah is that few things in life last, including people. All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field, and the grass withers, and the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. But the good news is that God will come to remedy the situation. Isaiah says, Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and God's arm rules. Those last words sound pretty good, don't they? I mean, we want God to come running to us, but come when we're ready. And God, please come with good news. I mean, who wouldn't want God when God comes in a good mood and packing gifts, right? But what about the bad news that Isaiah points to? It's kind of like the spirit of Christmas yet to come did for Scrooge when God seems to be hovering about in a crabby mood. And there are times in our life like that, aren't there? You've had them, tough times that can make any of us wilt and sag. Many of your personal stories could make the strongest soul stumble. When our worlds are all mixed up, we want our church to be a stable place too, right? But I have news for you this morning. If a church is healthy, the only thing stable about it is God's presence and that the word of God stands forever. If Salem, as a church, is alive in the spirit, it won't be stable because things will be happening. Great things will be happening because this is God's church not yours in fact I invite you to say those words with me say with me God this is your church not mine God this is your church not mine how did that feel saying that relieved maybe because the loads off you or resistant because of all the work you've put into this church. And I praise God for all of you who have worked your tails off for Salem. That's the spirit moving in you. Praise God for that. But the truth is, Salem is not your church any more than it is my church. It is God's church. And God's church here at Salem is in transition right now. You all know that. The Spirit is moving here. I've heard you say that too, and I agree. Can you feel it? Don't you just feel that great things are about to happen here? But when great things happen, that means change. And change can be a desert experience because it isn't stable. It's new. It's unknown. And we don't know what it will ultimately bring. So the good news is that this is God's church, not ours. And it is here that Isaiah says, God can lift the load. How? Well, first, 
Isaiah assures us that God is in our desert of transition. God is right smack in the middle of it. And God cares about what's going on here right now. Even if God is not, at the moment, doing what we think God should be doing. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and God's arm rules. Isaiah paints a picture of someone arriving personally, ready to help. God comes ready to get involved in whatever ails us. And then Isaiah assures us that God is not planning on leaving. And God's going to make sure to lay the plans to remedy our desert situation. However long it takes for you to call a new pastor, God is already laying the plans and readying that person who eventually will come together with you to move through and beyond this transition into something new. Like a shepherd unwilling to abandon his flock, God will carry the lambs in God's arms. God carries them in God's bosom. God is carrying you right now in God's bosom. And God gently leads those with young, the vulnerable ones, the frightened ones, the insecure ones. God is leading Isaiah is falling all over himself trying to tell us that in the midst of our fears to get ready for great things to begin to happen. That's what faith is all about, isn't it? Hoping for that which we don't yet see. And Isaiah pushes us to remember the times in the past when we felt abandoned by God and God pulled us through to this day. And what God did then, God can do again. Even more, God promises to do it again. And God calls us to take this leap of faith. But it isn't a leap into the unknown. It's a leap into the arms of the one who carries the universe without raising a sweat, the one for whom all things really are possible. Now, we all know from experience that faith is anything but easy, even when it comes to trusting God. So Isaiah says that the strength to trust God comes from remembering what God did to get you this far to this day. Take a moment to remember. Remember either times in Salem's past when God was present and moving you to this moment today or remember difficult times in your own personal lives where God was present and you didn't see God until you moved past that hard time you all know that footprints poem think of those times when God carried you and you didn't even know it until you got through that hard time remember Isaiah tells us all that God has done for you in the past. Through all your scary times, through all those unsettling times of transition, God says to you, remember, and now take it one day at a time because a better day is coming. God says so. And it is God, not us, who has the vantage point to see what lies ahead of us. And God is strong enough to lift whatever it is that weighs us down with fear. No matter what it is. When God decides it's time to act, God will come. Just as Isaiah promised. Into our deserts, into our fears. And we're kind of on a fence right now. Is another way to look at this transition time where we're on a fence where we can't fall back on one side but we're going to have to step off the fence onto that other side but we're not quite ready yet 
to determine and see what that future is going to be for our church. Making decisions about our future during our annual meeting today and in the months that follow could be, might be, difficult. They also could be painful. And they could stretch us in ways that we don't want to be stretched. But remember, God still stands beside us. And at the same time, God does not march to the beat that we try to drum for God. But God didn't go through all the trouble of giving us life as people and as a church, as a body, as a community. God didn't give us this life and travel through this life with us this far to go and dump us now. Comfort, comfort my people. Despite all your worries and fears, a great day is coming. That is the message that God has for you and for me and for Salem Lutheran Church in Deerwood this December day. So lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up and fear not, people, for great things are about to happen.